Well, it doesn't take much really to get ready uh, <laughs> in terms of vlogging and so, forth, so on and so forth. <sighs> and because I am vlogging as I am, I'm not this is not a, uh, a sort of a performance or anything like that. It, 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 it's a uh, it's a log. It's part of a journal, part of my uh, scientific journal, if you will. And so you see all the various different bits and pieces. Uh, and I should say our uh, our uh, scientific journal, uh, because we are Cyborg Alpha. Cyborg Alpha is a real research project in which uh, there is the uh, symbiotic relationship between man and machine, uh, particularly the computer system. And the computer system, particularly on Linux, is not defined, it's not specifically defined, it is amorphous. And in the amorphous situation, you can define uh, this computer system in any manner you'd like, including devices or, 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 or laptops or this or that. It, it also does, because you now have voice augmentation, you have voice interaction, it no longer needs to be integrated in order to become part of a cybernetic system. It just depends on how you use it. It depends on where your uh, uh, um, your functionality is in terms of how you, uh, in many cases, sew the fabric of cyberspace. Uh, cyberspace, like uh, space itself, and space and time itself, is a fabric. It can be woven. It can be tailored, and it really, it really depends on how you tailor the cyberspace to your space. Uh, determines whether or not you are a cyborg or not. If uh, you are there functionally, uh, and I'm on, I'm online and use cyberspace uh, close to 15 hours a day, if not longer, and uh, my bed is even hooked up, uh, <laughs> and my bathroom, then uh, one can, can, can conclude or at least state that Functionally speaking, that you are living, you have a life within cyberspace. And within that life of, in cyberspace, that can be defined as cyborg alpha. That's uh, the cybernetic existence. And then once again, uh, because a large chunk of this stuff is still very theoretical, there's still a lot of conceptual work to do. Uh, to bring this out further, you have to sort of do out the pseudocode, when the pseudocode is your concept, and how this is going to work, how this is going to be structured. And I am working on the voice now. Uh, I've got somewhat of a voice for, for, for Cyborg Owl, but I do have to work on it more. It's still a, a, a rudimentary or a very basic voice. Uh, there is n isn't a lot of intonation in there. There's not a lot of emotion within it. That has to be added in. But the thing is, how you do emotion, how you represent emotion, really is an, 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 an issue in addition to simply uh, the con the syntax. The, the syntax that is used is not properly defined because dialects, and this includes dialects of English, it really depends on where it's spoken and who who the conversation is in, who the conversation is between. That defines the context in which you have your syntax. Some of it's formal, some most of, some of it's formal. Very few of it, very little of it, very little of English is formal. Most of it is uh, is colloquial. It, it is within the local um, environment. It, it is specific to the local environment. And does not have what we call a formal definition or a formal, uh, for, formal type of syntax. It is there simply to express the emotions or the thoughts of the person uh, who is using it. And, and so, what happens? There isn't necessarily a, a, a concern uh, with the so-called the formality of of, of uh, syntax. It's just used as it is. And so. Anyways, we are here at, uh, you know, it's uh, 7.45, at 7 hours and 45 minutes into the first day of February 2021. Uh, I did the vlogging for the weekend vlog on the scooter, uh, did Saturday and Sunday.
I went in to my parents' house on Saturday and came back on Sunday. Uh, it was about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, th is this outside of the purview of science, outside the purview of the research I'm doing, outside the purview of meditation? The answer is no, because what I've added into my meditation, and it has affected my dreams, uh, is the sense of... Call, something called, and this is a type of meditation called extreme conditioning, where you do not keep the environment com comfortable for yourself. You, you, you adjust, and right now, uh, my temperature, the average temperature in my place is about 58 degrees. And I do have to adjust uh, my body in terms of how I eat, the physiology, to the temperature of the environment, and that is part of extreme conditioning. And when the summer comes along, I'll be working the opposite direction and working towards uh, 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 conditioning my body to stand withstand, withstand 80 degrees worth of heat. So the, my, the, t the temperature of my place will fluctuate between winter and summer. Winter, it will be a, 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 at a minimum of 58 degrees. And uh, in the summer, it will be a maximum of 80. So I have to sort of work my body to sort of adjust to these particular environments. Uh, there is an adjustment in food because there is also an adjustment in, in physiology. Typically, the food you're adjusting is, and this is the way it does, it works in the winter, in order to increase my carbohydrate intake, because carbohydrate burns and creates heat, uh, I reduce the amount of proteins. Proteins in the diet uh, produce an endothermic reaction. Uh, endothermic reactions... Uh, take in heat, they, they, they absorb heat, so uh, if your body is already cold, you're trying to keep your body warm, an endothermic reaction is not what you want because you're now, your body is now losing heat, it's just taking heat from the surrounding environment in order to produce the, the particular uh, uh, chemical changes that are necessary within the uh, digestive uh, process. Uh, however, in the summer, you don't want the heat. So in the summer, this is where you bring in your protein. That's why, again, the protein uh, digestion uh, brings in an, an endothermic reaction and tends to cool the body down. And that's, uh, you use other things of that nature. This includes uh, dairy products, milk itself. Tea actually is very cooling for the body. If you have tea, even if it's cold, it actually cools the body down. More so than other juices or anything else. It does cool the body. So, I use these different... Well, <laughs> I guess this is why uh, iced tea is used uh, in the Asian, the Asian sphere, in Asian cooking. Uh, whenever you cook with heat, you always cook with... You always uh, have an iced tea with it. Well, because it reduces the heat. It, it, it's your fire extinguisher. And it works the best, including uh, also if you have a, a a shake of some type or a smoothie, that also works. So, but anyways, I think that's about it for now. It's just about uh, 5.30 on February 2nd, so it's 17 hours and 32 minutes into the day. Uh, February 2nd, uh, it's a Tuesday, 2021. And of course, the, t the it, 21 is now shaping up to be a lot like uh, 2020. And as this uh, real realization is starting to dawn on people... People aren't as, as excited as they were before. They, well, once Donald Trump is gone, everything's going to get back to normal. And, well, not necessarily the case. One often thinks, and this is when I'm looking back at the uh, vlogs I've done, and particularly the recent editings, I'm now into the 1st of January, into the first week of January, and 
I had done uh, a vlog in the laundry room, and the thing is that there's a lot of silence in there. And I said, well, why don't you speed it up and add some music? Well, there's no, no music to add because everything's restricted. Unless you create your own stuff, there's nothing really to add. Uh, so, uh, the music studio is somewhat functioning. I have to learn my music. I have to learn how to do composing. I have to compose my own stuff. But that's not exactly there yet, so it's going to take some time. It's going to take some uh, sort of effort to get that done. Uh, but uh, it will slowly come. Things don't uh, don't occur immediately here. There is a pace to thing. There is a there is in some cases a frenetic a frenetic pace where a lot has to get done immediately. But that's also at the same time. Uh, as much as you think you've achieved, there is so much further to go. And so there's always that sense, and it's not always easy to articulate it. So if you're doing, your, I'm doing my clothes, I'm uh, uh, doing the laundry, or even when I'm scooting, it's difficult to articulate uh, what's going on. Ugh what's going on in my mind and the different thoughts that uh, I'm sort of processing. Because there is some thought that's being processed, but at the same time, there's also other ideas that are being kicked around and sort of thought about. And In other words, the thinking doesn't stop. It doesn't stop uh, for a moment, even when I'm sleeping. It's basically from one situation of, uh, situation of thought to another. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm transitioning from uh, sleeping, which was one state of thought that produces a whole bunch of, 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 of experiences while you're asleep. And you sort of mull them over through your mind and you sort of go through. And once again, the emotions that, that are in there. In there. The situations will, will change, but the actual emotions don't necessarily change. The emotions and the consequences of your handling of, of the emotions don't change either. So, you'll have sort of, well, for about an hour or so, just sort of sitting there thinking about what's just occurred. Uh, and you process through that, then you sort of uh, have <laughs> inkling to get up and do something. And now some degree of conversation is here. There is some something to articulate, but the, uh, once again, it's not anything in a spectacular manner that you would say, okay, let's do this on a regular basis in terms of uh, continuously vlogging throughout the day because what what's going through your mind is simply not always in the position or in the sense of development that you can bring it out in a form that other people can understand. And you, how, do you, how do you describe a, to a blind person something they can't see? Same thing, there are things that we can't see in terms of our spiritual eyes that exist all around us, but we can't see them. And so, But if you start seeing these things, how do you explain it to somebody else without sounding crazy? I mean, this is, if you want to go into the nature of conspiracy theory, is in, this is where you need to be really very careful so that well yes the conspiracy theorists have a wrong conclusion but they're not necessarily wrong in terms of the information that they have they've seen things that they simply can't articulate and their their assumptions about what they've seen is more often than not what causes a large chunk of the problem but it's not that there's nothing there there is something there it's just a matter of being patient, being, you know, well, going after and doing the deep, the deep research dive. And my dad's involved in that now. He's, I've sort of, uh, uh, in, uh, sort of sparked the fire there, and he's off in different directions as he found different things. And everybody needs to sort of see things in their own way. There, there is the own their own path. The path I went down is not necessarily a path that my dad would understand or could understand. Uh, but he found his own way down. He, and, and he's got his path and he has his experiences on his path. And these are the things we can discuss. 
And my mom, she has her understand, own understanding of things, but uh, doesn't necessarily care to go down the path that we've gone down in terms of being going deeper into the research, deeper into the knowledge, but she has her own and she has her own understanding of things. And there's a limit to that. So my dad and I can discuss things that my mom, in some cases, doesn't, doesn't necessarily understand or, 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 or doesn't see. There's the bus. Well, it is the 3rd of February. My schedule is shifting yet again. And we are here for another package opening. So it is 11 hours and 18 minutes into the third day of February. So let's get this package open. I have an idea of what it might be. Let's open this up and find out. Yeah. Well, I enjoy my I enjoy my, my my home theater. I enjoy uh the TV in the media room. And it does take a fairly long time for packages to get here. Uh, I get 3D glasses. Two pairs. A nice case. I said things take a long time to get here. So what happens if some if something goes wrong with my projector? Well, I'd have to wait two three months to get it. So I always and this, I've done this the same thing with my my Android box. I always have a backup. And what came in today is the backup. For my radio room. But it is here. It's the backup for the media room. And that's what I have here. The backup for the media. The back. The backup system for the media room. That's what's here. That's what came in. Looks like it's a very nice uh, 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 style. It should be a better brightness than what I currently have. Uh, higher resolution. Now let's see, I've got the right cord here. Yes, I have a North American cord. It's also got a remote with it. Okay, great. Here is the projector itself. It's got a nice cover, a sliding cover for the lens. So there's a nice uh, cover for the lens there. Very nice. Uh, and I think this will go well, but that it's not going to be used right now. This is going to go into storage. And if something happens with the current projector, this is what's going to go in. So that's how I do things, and uh, I make sure I always have a backup, so if something happens, I have a very, very simple, a very quick replacement option.